In this video, we're going to take a look at the hypergeometric distribution. The hypergeometric distribution is the last distribution we're going to talk about in this chapter. And this one is um, quite often confused for the binomial distribution because of this first bullet point. Each trial consists of an outcome of success or failure, just like the binomial distribution. However, the differences are that we have a known size of the population and the trials are dependent. So if you think about, say, a bag of marbles and you're taking marbles out of a bag, you know how many marbles are in the bag and every time you take one out, it affects the probability. So when we talked about how to find um, probabilities using the multiplication rule and we said, hey, if they're not independent, then we have to have a conditional probability. That's really what this is all about. So this one is the most complicated in terms of the number of variables that we need to define. So the way that I like to think of it, because it can get confusing, is x and n go together. That's lowercase x, lowercase n. And then k and capital N go together. And so what we're talking about is the number of successes out of the number of trials of the sample and then the number of successes out of the number of trials or items in the population. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. And again, if you'll notice, we've got a lot going on here, but this is all combinations. That's all we're dealing with here is combinations. So let's take a look at how we would set this up. At the local grocery store, there are 20 boxes of cereal on one shelf, half of which contain a prize. Suppose you buy three boxes of cereal, what's the probability that all three boxes contain a prize? Well, let's talk this through. Now, obviously, I've already marked these for you down at the bottom, but let's talk them through as we read the question again. At the store, there are 20 boxes of cereal. So that's the total population. That's why N is 20. The total population is 20 boxes of cereal. Half of those contain a prize. Well, half of 20 is 10, and that is the number of successes in the population. So if you'll notice, we're talking about the population of all of the 20 boxes of cereal, and then half of those 20 boxes contain a prize. Now we're going to switch gears and talk about the sample. So suppose you buy three boxes of cereal. That's your uh, sample. The number of trials is three. What is the probability that all three boxes contain a prize? That is the number of successes in our sample is three. Now, how are we going to do this? This is the formula that we're going to use. So the probability that x equals three, again, x being our random variable, is 10 choose 3, and then we're going to take 20 minus 10, which is 10, and then choose 3 minus 3, we're using these values, and then the denominator is 20 choose 3. So 10 choose 3, 10 choose 0, 20 choose 3. And again, we're going to let um, our calculator do that work, or really we're going to let Excel do that work. But I can use my calculator, and again, I get 120 over 1140, which is 2 out of 19, or about 0 0.1053. So the probability that if I buy three boxes of cereal, I get a prize in each box is about 10.53%. Let's take a look at the same question again, now using Excel. So of course, we're going to find that Excel is very easy to use. Um, we're going to set up our... Um, generic equation in just a moment, but let's go ahead and find the solution. We're going to use hype geome, oops, I forgot the p, hype geome dot dist. And then again, this is the most complicated one because I need the correct values and I need them in the right order. So the sample of success is x, that's three. The number in the sample is the three boxes that I took off the shelf. So the first three was that all three contain a prize. The second three is that I'm buying three boxes. 
the population success is 10. So that's the number of boxes with a prize in the population and then the number in the population. So it's um, success, number, success, number. And then cumulative is a no for now. So again, this does match what we had found when we used a calculator. Now, of course, I want to do the exact same thing, but I want it to always find the answer for me. So notice the way I have this set up, x, n, k, n, just like I did here, but it's just gonna be easier. So x is three, n is three, uh, k is 10, n is, big N is 20. And again, it finds the answer for me, and that's a lot less work for me. Let's look at another question. And on this one, I'm just going to go straight to Excel, so I'm not going to work it out by hand. But let's go ahead and figure out what each value is, X, N, K, and capital N. There are seven yellow and nine green marbles in a bag. If five marbles are chosen at random without replacement, so that's the without replacement tells us hypergeometric and not binomial, what's the probability that exactly three of the marbles chosen will be yellow? All right, so let's go back to the beginning. I want to look at the population and the sample. So there are seven yellow and nine green marbles total. That's the population. So seven plus nine is 16. That's the size of the population. Now, success in this case is pulling out a yellow marble because the question asks the probability that three of the marbles will be yellow. So yellow is seven yellow out of the 16. So that's the number of successes in the population. Now let's look at the sample. How many marbles am I pulling out? Five marbles are chosen at random. That's the number of trials. How many of those are going to be a success? Exactly three. And so that is my solution, is 28.8% chance that if I pull out far five marbles, exactly three will be yellow. Just as we did with the other distributions, let's now look at a cumulative distribution. So cumulative, again, means I'm finding less than or less than or equal to or greater than or greater than or equal to. And I'm setting them up exactly the same way that I did before. I'm just using hypergeo or hypegeome.dist instead. And again, I'm still using the same idea as if it's exactly cumulative is zero. If it's less than, I'm taking the um, x value minus one. If it's at most, that means it includes that x value, so I don't take it minus one. If it's at least, I'm taking the complement, so one minus and then the x value minus one, and if it's more than, I'm taking the complement um, of whatever the x value is. So let's take a look at this question together. A shipment of 25 light bulbs. So that's the population. Right off the bat, we should know that. There's 25 total light bulbs. Contains three defective bulbs. So in this case, a defective bulb is a success. So there's three defective bulbs out of 25 in the population. Five bulbs are selected randomly without replacement. So five is the number of trials. What is the probability that fewer than two? So I'm gonna put a two here and then we're gonna talk about which one is the correct. Fewer than two means zero or one. So at most two, no. At least two, no. More than two, no. Less than two, yes. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at less than x, x is two. Fewer than two is the same as less than two. So it is 0 0.9087 or 90 point, I'd say 90.9% chance that fewer than two of the bulbs are defective. Take a look at this last one on your own. And again, you can feel free to use uh, the setup that I have for you here, but remember that I will be very interested in you telling me which one the correct answer is. So if you are finding all five solutions, say for a forum post 
or something like that, and you don't explain which one is the correct answer and why it is, then you're probably not going to get a lot of points. So just make sure you understand which one is the correct one. So let's take a look. A, pro a produce distributor is carrying nine boxes of Granny Smith apples and eight boxes of Golden Delicious apples. So we're talking about boxes, which is the population, and the size of the population is that I have nine and I have eight. So you can either add nine and eight in your head or put equals nine plus eight. If four boxes are randomly delivered to the local market, that's the number of trials, what is the probability that at least three of the boxes contain Golden Delicious apples? So three out of four, and then the successes in the population are, in this case, the number of boxes of Golden Delicious apples, which is eight. So I have all of the numbers in the right place, and now I have to determine which one is the correct answer. So it says, what is the probability that at least three? Well, lucky for us, we already have an at least. So this is at least three, which is 0.24117647. Now, what if I didn't have this handy dandy cheat sheet? That's okay, because we can still think, think through this one and we can say, okay, if I need at least three, so x is greater than or equal to three, remember that's one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to two. And so that's essentially what has happened here. If you'll notice, b2 minus one gives us three minus one, which is two. So I'm taking one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to two. So I'm not going to retype it out, but that's exactly how you would go about finding the solution. Up next, I'm going to give you three situations, one for each of the distributions that we've just discussed. Your job will be not to find the solution, but to tell which distribution is correct for each situation and why.